Hello friends, this video on neat dual nature of radiation and matter is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 11. The work functions for metals A, B and C are respectively 1.92 electron volt, 2 electron volt and 5 electron volt. According to Einstein's equation, the metals which will emit photoelectrons for a radiation of wavelength 4100 angstrom is Okay, so here we have three different metals and we know their work function. Now photoelectric emissions will happen only if the energy of the incident radiation is more than the work function, right? So let us first try to calculate the energy of the incident radiation. So energy of the incident radiation will be equal to Hc by lambda. Now H is Planck's constant which is 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34. C is 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by lambda is 4100 angstrom. So we will multiply it by 10 to the power minus 10 to convert it into meters. So now when you solve this you get 0 0.0048 into 10 to the power minus 16 joules. Now since the work functions are given in electron volts, let us convert this also in electron volts. So we divide it by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. So this much electron volt. So this comes out to be approximately 3 electron volt. Now let's see for which of these metals. Now let's start one by one. So for A, we see that the energy of the incident radiation is more than the work function. For metal B, we see that the energy of the incident radiation, which is 3 electron volt, is again more than the work function, which is 2 electron volt. And for metal C, we see that the energy of the incident radiation is less than the work function, which is 5 electron volts. So now tell me for which of these cases photoelectric emission will take place. So obviously photoelectric emission will take place for A because the energy is more than work function. It will also take place for B but it will not take place for C. So the right option would be A and B only. Question number 12. A light source is at a distance d from a photoelectric cell, then the number of photoelectrons emitted from the cell is n. If the distance of the light source and the cell is reduced to half, then the number of photoelectrons emitted will become how much? Okay, now what is happening as the distance between the light source and the cell changes? Now what happens as the distance between the light source and the photoelectric cell changes? Now when the distance changes, for example if the light source and the cell they are very far apart from each other, then what would happen? The intensity of the light that is falling on that on the particular surface will be very very less. less. So basically what we can say is intensity is inversely proportional to d square when d is the distance between the light source and the cell. So as the distance between the light source and the cell increases the intensity of light decreases. So we can also say that i1 by i2 if i1 and i2 are the intensities of light in the two different scenarios which we are discussing here like in the first scenario when the distance is d and in the second scenario when the distance is reduced to d by 2. So we have two cases here case one and case two. So in case one the distance is d in case two is distance is d by two. So we assume that the intensity in case one is i1 and the intensity in case two is i2. So we can say that i1 by i2 will be equal to d2 square by d1 square right. Now as for the question we know what is d2 by d1 is. So we can say that I1, so we know that D2 is actually equal to half D1. This is given in the question. So we can say I1 by I2 is equal to 1 by 4. So therefore we can say that I2 is equal to 4 I1. 
correct and therefore we can also say that the number of photoelectrons now as the intensity of light increases the number of photoelectrons emitted also increases so basically the number of photoelectrons emitted is directly proportional to the intensity of light so we can see that the intensity of light would become four times if the distance is reduced by half correct so we can say that the number of photo electrons would also become four times so therefore the correct option would be c so the concept here is this that the distance reduced by half so the intensity would increase by four times and number of photo electrons emitted is directly proportional to intensity therefore the number of photo electrons emitted would also become four times now let's move ahead and look at question number 13 Question number 13. In a photoemissive cell with exciting wavelength lambda, the fastest electron has speed v. If the exciting wavelength is changed to 3 lambda by 4, the speed of the fastest emitted electron will be. So again here we have to see the relationship between the wavelength of the incident radiation and the velocity of the electron that is emitted. So, so that's the relation that we are looking at. So from the photoelectric equation, we can say that maximum kinetic energy is E minus phi, where E is the energy of the incident radiation and phi is the work function. So K max can be written as half mv squared is equal to E can be written as hc by lambda minus phi. Right. So now let's see uh, what are what what are the things that are given in the problem. So first case is half m v one square is equal to h c by lambda minus phi. So this is equation number one. And what happens in the second case? In the second case, the speed is not known. So we assume it to be v two square. And this time the lambda is three lambda by four. So h c divided by three lambda by four minus phi. So this is equal to 4 hc divided by 3 lambda minus phi. This is equal to 4 by 3 into hc by lambda minus 3 by 4 into phi. So basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to establish a relationship where we can see that how half m v1 square and half m v2 square are related to each other. So basically we are trying to get a relationship between v1 and v2 so that you know we get to know which is bigger than the other one. Now this can further be written as 4 by 3 into hc by lambda. How can we write this? So take help of equation 1. hc by lambda can be written as half m v1 square plus phi. So this can be written as half m v1 square plus phi minus 3 by 4 phi. So now we will do the remaining calculation here. So we can say half m v2 square is equal to 4 by 3 half m v1 square plus 1 by 4 phi. Right? So from here again, if you take m as common, so what do you get? You would get half m v2 squared is equal to 4 by 3 m into half v1 squared plus 1 by 4 m into 5. So this m and m will get cancelled. So you can write v2 square is equal to. So now we will send this to here. This would be 8 by 3 into half v1 square plus 1 by 4 m into 5. And this can be further written as 4 by 3 v1 square plus 2 by 3 into phi by m. So now looking at this, what do you understand? You see that v2 square is something which you get when you add something to 4 by 3 v1 square. So this very clearly shows that v2 square is definitely greater than 4 by 3 v1 square, right? So let, let's take this part so we can say, so from this we can very, uh, 
I mean, clearly say that v2 square is greater than 4 by 3 v1 square. So now if you square root on both sides, you can say that v2 is greater than root over 4 by 3 v1. So we can say it is greater than 4 root over 4 by 3 into v. So d is the right option. So whenever you have to say whether one value is greater than or less than the other value, what you need to do is you need to reach to an expression where those two variables are related to each other in terms of like in this pattern where you can say that okay this variable is equal to the other variable plus or minus something. So looking at that you can identify which is bigger and which is smaller. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.